ne the next coolest thing is you can actually jump frequencies that are noisy uh, with this and we're going to get into that in just a second I gotta go change the thermostat setting but I'll be right back okay so like I said uh, I put it in a call for fan only it's not calling for cooling or anything and that's how you have to do it to set up for the frequency skipping so what you do is you hold the select and the up button down for a few seconds and that will access the frequency skipping uh, programming protocol so we are at test and skip frequency now I'm going to hold this button down and allow all the frequencies to run because I already have some skipped okay so all frequencies are cleared now this is going to allow the motor to run in all the frequencies and what it does is it it ramps up and down through the frequencies and stays on each one for a few seconds and while you're sitting here doing this you listen to the motor and as the motor gets loud you just skip a frequency it's real simple uh, if it's making noise in that frequency you just jump over it so uh, we're just going to go through this for a second and skip a few frequencies and, and uh, show you how it's done and what it looks like it's like I said it's very simple to do what I found is there's usually a range like it'll be real loud in say 42 hertz so like that one was loud at say 43 it started to get loud at 42 and it was still pretty loud at 44 so I went ahead and skipped 42, 43 and 44 and uh, just to get all the noise out so it'll start to ramp back down and we just keep listening and jump the frequencies. You can skip up to uh, 15 frequencies doing this. Now when you're in test and skip, it will not allow you to skip the lowest frequency setting or the highest frequency setting. So what I found is if you have noise in either of those two frequencies, you can go back into the main menu and you know, let's say at 50 hertz you have noise. Um, you just go in and set the highest frequency to 49 hertz. and what that does it doesn't allow it to even get up there and same thing in the lower frequencies um, if you have 25 set as your lowest frequency and it makes noise there just set it to 26 or even go a little lower and skip 25 you know go say to 23 hertz and then skip 25 actually I think 25 is the lowest hertz so we skipped a few frequencies and we're running back up to 50 now and uh, you'll be able to see it jump some frequencies right here see we went all the way across 32 and then when we get up to around 42 then it'll skip some there again I don't know if you can hear it ramping up, but you can hear it when each frequency engages. Uh, you, you can you can hear it in the motor. It's pretty cool, actually. Another thing you can do if you have 
uh, noises in the upper range and the lower range is adjust the uh, that the power adjustment. Um, you can play with it and go up or down on that. Like I said, that my last motor, I went all the way down to negative eight to get the noise out of it. It was just noise, real noisy. Uh, and that's one of the things Buddy LeBlanc told me was that if you have a motor that's noisy through the entire range and skipping frequencies and playing with the uh, power factor doesn't really get rid of it, then it, you probably need a new motor anyway. Um, so what I did is I took that old 10 year old motor out and I put a rescue motor in, a 220 volt 1175 blower motor and ICM says you can't use a rescue motor with this but this one's been working fine um, but again I'm only using one speed so I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not but it's got a rescue motor in there it's working fine um, it, it's it's the uh, 220 volt 1175 blower motor it's got the 10 microfarad capacitor in it and it's working fine and it's a whole lot quieter than the old one okay so I'm gonna go uh, set this thing back up in, in cooling and uh, we're just going to watch it for a second. Okay, so we're back in cooling. The uh, condenser outside is running. And there's a 10 second delay before startup. Now, it does this every time. It's going to start. And it's going to ramp all the way up to maximum hertz. And then ramp back down to the proper hertz, the proper frequency based on the um, return air temperature and the coil temperature input. The reason it ramps all the way up to maximum frequency is to lubricate the bearings in the motor. So on every startup it's going to ramp all the way up for a second for about a minute, anywhere from 45 seconds to a minute and a half I've, I've seen and then it comes back down to the to the frequency that it needs to be at to uh, maintain the coil temperature, the correct coil difference. So here we are ramping up. I don't know if we can get this in there. So we're ramping up to about 50 hertz at 4.7 amps. Let's see if we can get this on video. We're already starting to drop, so there we go. 36 hertz, 1.2 amps, 1.1, 1. So, quite a difference in the in the, the power consumption of the motor from 50 hertz or even 60 hertz running it at, at 6.2, 6.4 amps to now we're running at 27 hertz at one amp, and uh, we're trying to maintain that 30 degree coil right there. So. I have this system set for a 30 degree temperature difference and uh, it's trying to maintain that. As you can see it's running at the lowest uh, frequency setting now and as soon as it uh, gets there it starts to climb a little bit. So it just modulates up and down and up and down and one degree difference will, will cause that as you can see right now it's ramping up quite a bit just because of, of the one degree. It just it'll do this all day long. It just sits there and ramps up and ramps down and you know, like I said, nice airflow. I haven't noticed a difference in. There's fewer cycles, but they seem to last a little bit longer than than normal. Instead of having uh, three and a half to to about three and a half cycles an hour is what I have been running with uh, the comfort control center on here. I'm running about two two and a half cycles per hour. It's only been a week, so I don't have a whole lot of data yet. But that seems to be about it but the blower runs longer uh, and the humidity is much better the humidity point in the house with the uh, comfort control center versus without it is about eight percent less so the difference in comfort level is is significant I mean it's it's not just a a thing you know it's not it's not a bunch of sales BS it actually works so